Reform devotion number one of 365. Your everlasting comfort from the saints' everlasting rest by Richard Baxter. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 8, 38 through 39. Christian, believe this and think on it. You shall be eternally embraced in the arms of that love which was from everlasting and will extend to everlasting, of that love which brought the Son of God's love from heaven to earth, from earth to cross, from cross to the grave, from the grave to glory, that love which was weary, hungry, tempted, scorned, scourged, buffeted, spit upon, crucified, pierced, which did fast, pray, teach, heal, weep, sweat, bleed, die, that love will eternally embrace you. When perfect created love and most perfect uncreated love meet together, it will not be like Joseph and his brethren who lay upon one another's necks weeping. It will be loving and rejoicing, not loving and sorrowing. Yes, it will make Satan's court ring with the news that Joseph's brethren are come that the saints are arrived at the bosom of Christ, out of the reach of hell forever. Nor is there any such love as David's and Jonathan's, breathing out its last into sad lamentations for a forced separation. Know this, believer, to your everlasting comfort. If those arms have once embraced you, neither sin nor hell can get you thence forever. You have not to deal with an inconstant creature, but with him with whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. His love to you will not be as yours was on earth to him, seldom and cold, up and down. He that would not cease nor abate his love for all your enmity, unkind neglects, and churlish resistances, can he cease to love you when he has made you truly lovely? He that keeps you so constant in your love to him that you can challenge tribulation, Distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword to separate your love from Christ, how much more will he himself be constant? Indeed, you may be persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord." And now, are we not left in the apostles' admiration? What shall we say to these things? Infinite love must needs be a mystery to a finite capacity. No wonder angels desire to look into this mystery. And if it is the study of saints here to know the breadth and length and depth and height of the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, the saints' everlasting rest must consist in the enjoyment of God by love.